Welcome back to Wadcast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. I'm your host, Wad. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Donald Trump's motion to dismiss that was filed uh, by his lawyers today. To, uh, January 8th is the deadline for filing these motions, as we discussed in our last video. So unlike Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's lawyers actually filed something. Rudy Giuliani's lawyers are asked for an extension, and he, they were denied. We covered that in our last video. If you missed it, go check it out over here. But today we're going to be talking about the traitor himself, who is uh, once again recycling these arguments uh, of immunity in front of the judge. And the judge is, of course, Judge McAfee. Uh, uh, who's the same judge in all these RICO cases uh, against uh, Giuliani and Donald Trump and John Eastman and everybody else, Jeffrey Clark, everybody else who's been charged in this case. He's the judge overseeing everything. So all these cases are heard in front of him during the motions and during the trial when it happens. Um, and so we're going to be talking about Trump's lame arguments and why they will fail. I'll be explaining the law and why they're just as infirm as they were in D.C. These are recyclings of the arguments he made in D.C. about presidential immunity and double jeopardy and he has two more uh, due process and another one. We'll go through all of them and I'll explain why he's going to lose on everything as usual. Okay, so this is the cover page for their filing asking for a motion to dismiss on uh, the indictment. They're trying to get rid of the indictment completely and basically let him walk free. That's never going to happen. Um, uh, based on presidential and supremacy clause, immunity and supporting memorandum of law. So they, they filed a whole bunch of like uh, packets of uh, legal arguments, all of them they're going to lose on. But nevertheless, they did file uh, motions, at least unlike Giuliani's lawyers who just came to court and made excuses and asked for a deadline. So I give them credit for at least filing something, although they're going to lose on everything. So let's go through all the arguments once again. Uh, Law and Crime did a great article. They uh, broke down the arguments here, uh, uh, the arguments that they made. I'll be explaining it. They don't explain it, but that's what I'm here for. That's why you watch my videos. I'll explain to you guys using history and jurisprudence that is uh, directly on point here why he will lose all these arguments. Okay, so let's start with our favorite one, which I've debunked many times, with which uh, Jack Smith also debunked uh, in D.C. And the D.C. appeals courts will be hearing arguments on this on February 8th, I think. Uh, and they will also side with Jack Smith and declare that Donald Trump is not above the law and that he does not have absolute immunity and he will be prosecuted like any other crook, criminal. That's what he is, okay? So uh, so again, this is a recycling of their old arguments. They got absolute immunity. Uh, they have supremacy clause, which is also lame, and uh, due process, which is even lamer, basically claiming ignorance of the law, not going to work, and lastly, double jeopardy. So I've explained double jeopardy and um, the uh, the absolute immunity before because these are the same two arguments he used in D.C. Now they have been appealed to the D.C. appeals court, and my guess is the Supreme Court is not even going to take it. They're just going to uh, they're just going to let the D.C. appeals court decision stand because the law is so clear on this. There's no way the Supreme Court or the D.C. Appeals Court is going to say that Trump is above the law. No way. And here's why. OK, so we've covered this before. OK, Federalist Paper 69, the most on point uh, part of jurisprudence from the Federalist Papers, which is the foundation for this country, wrote, uh, written by three of the most uh, important or I should say two of the most important founding fathers. John Jay is not well known, but Alexander Hamilton who you can see over here was one of the primary founding fathers. He was the uh, founder of the Federalist Party, my favorite party, and uh, my second favorite founding father, number one being John Adams, uh, who was the man, and uh, James Madison, who is the primary writer of the Constitution. So, of course, he's relevant. Uh, and the last person, John Jay, who was an important statesman and a founding father uh, back during the Revolutionary Times. So these are the three people who nobody's going to question, nobody from the right or the left are going to question, are important people who had a significant say over the foundation of this country, and they wrote these Federalist Papers. So let's go to the, this paragraph, which Jack Smith cited in his uh, argument, in his uh, legal arguments against Trump's uh, immunity claims in D.C., and I want to go through this again because this is the most important thing that you guys need to know about what this country is all about. Okay, this paragraph outlines it. The president of the United States would be liable to be impeached, tried, and upon conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, removed from office, and would afterward, afterward be liable to prosecution and punishment in the ordinary course of the law. Does it sound like, the, uh, like Alexander Hamilton, who wrote this, by the way, does it sound like he's saying that the president is above the law? 
No, doesn't sound like that to me. And he goes on to say further, the per, uh, to, to differentiate America from, from Great Britain, who they just seceded from, the person of the king of Great Britain is sacred and inviolable. There is no constitutional tribunal to which he is amenable, no punishment to which he can be subjected without involving the crisis of national revolution. In this delicate and important circumstance of personal responsibility, the president of the Confederated America... Um, would stand upon no better ground than a governor of New York who can be prosecuted and imprisoned and upon worse ground than the governors of Maryland and Delaware. So that has to do with continental politics back then. Uh, so we're not going to get into that, uh, what, what he's talking about there. But nevertheless, that's uh, historically rele relevant, but legally not relevant. The point is the president stands no better ground than the governor of New York. Is anybody going to say that the governor of New York has absolute immunity from prosecution? No. In fact, governors of New York have been prosecuted criminally before. Before. The the lieutenant governor of New York, some black guy, was prosecuted last year by the Justice Department. I forget his name. Okay, uh, so no, no, nobody's above the law, and certainly not the president. So the most important thing: the person of the King of Great Britain is sacred and inviolable. There is no constitutional tribunal to which he's amenable. So let me make this real solid for you. The King of England right now is Charles. Okay, Charles the Third or whatever the hell his name is. Charles. That's all I know. King Charles can literally go to uh, Islington and stab somebody to death and the crown prosecutors can't prosecute him. Why? Because the king of England is above the law. Donald Trump in his legal papers are asking for the court to hold that he is above the law, that nothing he does, everything that he does is official duties and therefore he can't be prosecuted. No court is going to say that. Okay, All you have to do, all Jack Smith has to do and all Fannie Willis has to do is cite this. Federalist 69, that is the best argument they have. Okay, The Supreme Court, if they, if they, if they take this up, and the D.C. appeals courts will, will also be citing this when they rule against Donald Trump. Watch it happen next month. Okay, Who, Whatever court looks at this, this argument of presidential immunity, absolute presidential immunity, they're going to cite this. This is jurisprudence that is part of our legal system. This is st coming straight out of the foundations of our country. The Federalist Papers are the foundation, the legal and political foundations of our country. That's why these people, th that's why it's so important. That's why they were talking about this. That's why it's part of history, okay, American history. And it is it is part of the uh, history and tradition test that the Supreme Court and other courts use to come to legal conclusions. So this is binding law on every court, okay? And the appeals courts in D.C. will cite this when they rule against Trump and say that he can be prosecuted within the with the will uh, with, as in line with the will of the founding fathers okay <clears throat> the king of england is above the law he's amenable to no uh, tribunal he there is no punishment to which he can be subjected okay that means that he's literally above the law king uh, king well, king uh, charles can go kill somebody on any any part of the king, kingdom of england and he can, he can be held he cannot be held to account because he's above the law that's what donald trump is pretending he is and the founding fathers specifically said that he is not the whole point the difference he, he literally says that the president of the americas would stand on no better ground than the governor of new york and the governor of new york last time i checked can be prosecuted and imprisoned uh, with accordance with the founding fathers and federal law today, okay, and of course Supreme Court jurisprudence as well. So this, uh, I've debunked this before, but we have to keep doing it because it's uh, the most the most ridiculous argument that Trump is making. And Nixon tried to make something like this as well, and he was denied back in the 1970s too. Uh, he had to turn over those tapes to Congress and to the investigators from the DOJ because he doesn't have any immunity from criminal prosecution. His actions were not part of the duties of the president. Even if they were, criminal acts can still be prosecuted. All right, so I think we beat that dead horse already. So they claim that no president has been prosecuted and this is unprecedented and blah, 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 blah. This is going to constrain the power of the presidency, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit, okay? Nobody's buying this. He's not above the law and that's the bottom line. We're moving on. Next argument. Um, supremacy clause. Okay, so th they try to claim that because of the supremacy, supremacy clause, which is Article 6, Clause 2, I believe, but it basically says that the interest of the, uh, of the national government cannot be contravened by the states. So that's like th that gives uh, the states the second seat and the federal government the first seat. You can't the states can't interfere with the official actions of the federal government. Uh, 
given certain circumstances. OK, um, but anyways, they're trying to use that to say that Donald Trump was acting within the functions of the presidency and of the national government when he was trying to overturn the election. Therefore, he cannot be prosecuted for anything he did because he was part of his official duties. Once again, trying to overturn the election is not part of your official duties. It is not part of it is not part of the interest of the national government. And they go on to say there is there's nobody that can doubt that the election of the president is uh, connected to the function of the government. I wouldn't doubt that. But your client was not doing anything having to do with the election of the president. The president had already been elected by the electors, by the 50 states who are responsible according to the, uh, the Constitution. According to the Constitution, the states run the elections and they certify them. That had already been done. OK, the national election was already decided. Your client lost and he went out out of his way to try to, uh, to overturn the officially certified election. That is not protected by the supremacy clause. It does not apply here. OK, the, the interests of the national government were not being uh, uh, served by your client trying to stay in power and overturning an election. OK, so I hope that's clear to everybody who's paying attention. He was not doing anything that was an official act. So he's not immune to any of this stuff. Supremacy, supremacy clause does not apply. Next, due process. Trump lacked fair notice that his advocacy in the instance of the 2020 presidential election could be criminalized. So he, that that's in reference to him calling Raffensperger and trying to overturn the election and also threatening Raffensperger, which people don't talk about. They should. Uh, the worst thing is not him saying find 11,000 votes. The worst thing comes after uh, towards the end of the call where uh, he tells Raffensperger that if you don't do what I'm asking, you might be criminally prosecuted. That's a predicate act that's threatening a public official to change his, uh, that could be con construed as bribery as well, but more like trying to interfere with the actions of a public official, which he has been hit with. That's one of the predicate charges of the RICO uh, charge, okay? RICO is, could be make up, made up of many charges like bribery uh, and murder for hire, things like that. There could be many predicate felonies as well that accompanies the RICO charge and trying to interfere with the duties of a, uh, of a uh, state official could be one of them. And he has been charged with something like that. Uh, I think it's called interference with election office or something in Georgia. Every state has their own words to, to uh, characterize these laws. But what you did in that phone call is illegal. OK, I don't know about the find 11,000 votes part. I don't know how that's legally uh, relevant. I don't think that's the most the worst thing he did. Threatening Raffensperger with potential criminal prosecution if he doesn't do what Trump said. That's the worst part. OK, so mainstream media, as always, has focused on the wrong thing about the 11,000 whatever votes. Instead of the worst part, the worser part, which is him threatening an official, saying that you're going to be prosecuted if you don't do the right thing here. And uh, and yeah, and then you're going to be a hero if you do the right thing. That's what he said. OK, that's another thing. So uh, that's threatening and uh, offering something of value, which is his praise and the praise of MAGA if he does the right, the right thing, meaning overturning the election in Georgia or trying to find those votes. So, yeah. Uh, due process grounds, that's not, that's not even a cr proper argument here. Tr you not knowing the law, that you're doing something criminal, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. How do you not know that? This this argument is a joke here. Okay, these are 14th Amendment argument. 14th Amendment does not apply here. So this will also be dismissed. Okay, there's no legal grounds to claim this. This is ridiculous. And they're saying that this is a novel construction of the law. No, it's not. You guys had a concerted effort to try to overturn the election. And they're pretending like this is a novel construction. Really? Trying to committing election crimes? I, I guarantee you election crimes go back to England. And in America, of course, going back to the beginning of the country, we had elections. So the election law is very soft. Solid and trying to overturn the results and become to power after you lose, uh, that's not novel. This is not a novel construction. Fannie Willis is doing her job prosecuting a criminal part of a racketeering, who's part of a racketeering enterprise. So no, that's not a valid argument. All right, next, double jeopardy. This was one of the ones he tried to use in um, in DC as well, and it was denied by Judge Chutkin because it's ridiculous. And so let's go over this one. Double jeopardy is part of the Fifth Amendment, and they're claiming that once the Fifth Amendment says if you have been tried for a certain felony, then you can't be your life and limb cannot be twice put at risk. That's what the Fifth Amendment says, the, the double jeopardy clause. How, as I've explained in my other video where I debunked uh, the, the one when they made this in D.C., an impeachment process in Congress has nothing to do, no resemblance whatsoever to a criminal prosecution by prosecutors and the Justice Department. OK, zero, none. 
The, you, if you get, if you, if you, if he was convicted there, then he would have just been removed from office. He would have never gone to prison. There's no prison time. Congress is a legislative branch. They can't do anything to put people in prison. Only the Justice Department can, federally can put you in prison or state prosecutors. Okay, prosecutors who have the who are part of the executive branch, they're the only ones who can put criminals in prison. Nobody else. Everybody else can only take civil actions. Even Congress, they can't put anybody in prison, right? So uh, this this argument that they make. That he was uh, impeached by the House and then acquitted by the Senate, and therefore he's uh, completely uh, absolved and he can't be prosecuted now. Mentally, let's see, they're mentally deranged arguments, okay, and legally, legally untenable argument. This is the worst argument I've heard. This might actually be worse than the presidential immunity one, although that one's pretty bad too, because he has no standing there as well. So this, so that's the worst one, but this one's pretty bad. Okay, this is these these those two are definitely worse than these. These are well, this one's pretty bad as well. They all suck. This is the best one they could probably present. Okay, they they have a, a plausible chance of winning. They're not going to win, but the highest chance they have is on this supremacy clause. Uh, the the uh, other three they suck. Let's see if my predict predictions come true. I give the predictions before they happen and watch Judge McAfee uh, rule against him on all of this stuff, and uh, he's not going to be smiling. For long, okay, he's going to be crying like a little bitch when the judge rules against him on all these things and the prosecution moves forward. He's trying to dismiss the entire indictment and just walk free. That's never going to happen, okay? Watch Judge McAfee in a uh, next month or whenever he hears this, these uh, motions, which are going to uh, which are going to be denied uh, through the next coming months after the deadlines are met, and uh, he's he's going to lose on all of this stuff, okay? So that's all I got to say for this video. Hopefully, I was clear. Uh, but if you want to support my work, you can do so by clicking over here and also watch my last video over here. Uh, the best way to help the channel is to like the video and to watch all the way to the end. So thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. It helps my channel a lot. And I'll see you guys all in my next video as always.